Quad Quadam FPV says I bought the Skyzone Cobra XV2. How can I tell if I have the updated board? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, I mean, the yeah. Uh, I'm trying to look if there's like a version number. I think, Blunty, I remember when they released the receiver module, the updated receiver module, and it had like some kind of version marker on it. We talked about it on the news, but I'm blanking on the details. You want version, that's it. You want version 3.3. Is that it? Uh, version 3.3? Let's see. Sky Zone Steady View Receiver. I'm trying to get information about the versions of the Steady View Receivers. And I'm looking at the chat to see. Uh, Pacific Northwest says that the V2 Cobra goggle does have the updated board. Peter Sovis says open up the receiver. It should say V33 on top. Yeah. If you have. How to tell the, thank you. Well done. Great, great. Uh, thank you for Machine Head here. How to t tell the hardware version. In settings, system menu, firmware version, you should see the firmware version. And here is the answer. If it starts with 139, it means V1 hardware. 239 means V2 hardware. 339 means V3 hardware. That's a be best answer there, Machine Head. I owe you three of those $5 for helping me answer the question. Uh, Good luck collecting. <laughs> Thank you for your help, though. Um, that is the answer. Uh, next up, we have a question from OTR Flyer who asks, OTR Flyer asks, Thank you for a $10 super chat, OTR Flyer. I've ordered all the parts for my 8S build. Oh, no. Big mistake. I bought a new charger and parallel board, so I'm vested. Just wondering, did you have to pin tune your build? No, OTR flyer. Shockingly, I did not. And this is interesting because Blunt, um, Bubby, Bubby, I keep mixing up Blunty and Bubby's name. Sorry about that, Blunty. Uh, Bubby said that his like had to, he'd had to turn his master multiplier way down. I flew mine on the defaults. I fully expected it to fly to the moon and flip out and not fly right, and it flew fine. It flew fine. Beta flight four four. I hardly know what to say. Yep. It worked. Now I would I would take that carefully. Like the first time you hover it, do it somewhere where you expect it to freak out and fly to the moon. Be very careful, you know, tr tr like there's a set of things I do when I've got a, a build that is I don't I'm not convinced it m won't have problems. So like I will arm and I'll very carefully tilt it on the on the three axes and see if it freaks out or tries to fly away. And then if that works, I'll slowly raise the throttle to a hover and I'll be fully ready to disarm if it flies away. And I'll like do it over a grassy field instead of an asphalt parking lot. Not that I test fly over asphalt parking lots, but like I'll put it at the end of my concrete uh, pad and I'll tilt it towards the grass so that if it freaks out and flies to the moon and I disarm it falls in the soft grass and doesn't break and then if it hovers I'll do some throttle pumps and I'll see if it behaves itself during the throttle pumps or if it tries to fly away or if it falls out of the air and then I'll check I'll disarm and I'll check and see if the motors are hot or going to smoke and then I'll go take it out and I'll gently fly it and I'll see if it's behaving normally and not trying to freak out or fly away or fall out of the sky. And then I'll do some full, maybe I'll do some full throttle runs and I'll see if the motors are hot. And I'll just slowly build up to more and more aggressive moves as I convince myself that it's gonna be okay. I don't do every single one of those steps for every single build, but if I had a build, I wasn't sure that it was gonna be safe to fly. That's how I would approach it. Um. Parallax says, thank you for a $5 super chat, Parallax. What makes a motor compatible with a prop? I have the T-Motor M1104 and they work great with Biblade 3018s, but become extremely hot with wind dancers on 3S. So, so basically Parallax, the issue there is how much load the prop is putting on the motor. And in general, the more thrust a prop makes, the more load it's gonna put on the motor. 
A motor's job, if you generalize it, is to generate torque, to rotate something in, re in resistance to some load. And rotating the, the shaft in resistance to the load is doing work, okay? So that load that's on the motor's shaft, it might be the weight of your car, you know, creating drag and friction and gravity pulling it down and inertia making it not want to move. That would be a motor turning the wheel of a car. The load on the motor shaft might be a pulley and it's, it's lifting a bucket out of a well or it might be a propeller. And a smaller propeller or a lower pitch propeller is going to make less thrust and it's going to put less load on the motor. The thing about hot motors is that it's a nonlinear effect and I have to thank Chris Rosser for uh, uh, opening my eyes to this. Uh, it, it was the 8S build. I thought that the 8S build was just going to be a novelty and I was just going to do it for clicks. I, it was fun to fly, and I saw that Rotoriot got 100,000 clicks views on theirs. And I was like, well, shit, I'll do it. Sure. Why not? I'm going to get a lot of views. It's going to be fun to build. It's going to be fun to fly. Sure. Let's do it. But the actual discussions with Chris Rosser about 8S and the way that it affects heat buildup in the motors were so educational, and that, to me, was 100% worth the whole thing. So with a motor, as long as the motor has the ability to dissipate the heat that the motor is generating, everything is fine. As soon as a motor starts to be unable to dissipate the heat that the motor is creating, what happens is that the motor gets hotter, the magnets get hotter. When the magnets get hotter, the magnets get weaker. And when the core of the motor gets hotter, the magnetic field strength that the motor core can, can contain, I guess, I'm not sure how to put it, gets lower, which means that you get this cascade effect where the motor gets hot, therefore the motor gets less efficient and weaker. Therefore, you work the motor harder, which, which makes it get even hotter. And so what you'll see is that with one prop, the motor's fine. It's dissipating all the heat that it's generating. Everything is fine. And you'll go to another prop and suddenly the motor is way overheated because you've crossed over in that cascade, that feedback effect is now occurring. So that may be why that's happening. Bob Tube wants to know, what's the difference between flying 6S with 2400 kV on a motor limit versus buying dedicated 6S motors? Bob Tube, thank you for a $5 super chat, by the way, Bob. What I'm surprised you say that 6S motors are more expensive though. Like, I don't think motors cost different based on their KV. If I go look at a given motor and I look at the 2400 KV version and the 1600 KV or 1800 KV version, I don't think they're going to cost any difference. I suspect so, he means he already has them. Like, is it oh, worth buying new ones? I see. Good point, also, DC. Boo tube? Yeah. I don't know if you care about boo tube, not Bob tube. Oh, boo tube. Thank you. I appreciate that. See? I'm glad you're here, Blunty. Making the live streams better. <laughs> mm. He has the motors already. Um, so, I, I, the differences are subtle. Um, and I also feel not entirely qualified to talk about them. Um, what you're doing is you are taking a higher voltage... And then you are using PWM to average it down to a lower voltage, which is not quite the same thing as just having a lower voltage. Um, so I think that you are more likely to get desyncs. I'm pretty sure about that. But I think that like Ciati did that for, for like a year and said it was great. So, I think you could probably get away with it. I think it's worth a try. Well, mm, yeah, do like a do like a seventy percent throttle limit, twenty four hundred kV. What does that work out to? What if we went to like nineteen hundred kV? Nineteen hundred out of twenty four hundred, that would be an eighty percent throttle limit. Nineteen hundred kV is perfectly reasonable for six S. So just motor. do like an, what's that? He said motor limit the question, but well, just for clarity, motor limit, oh, not yes. throttle limit. 
motor limit. Thank you. In the in the PID tuning tab, not the rate profile tab. I'd say do like an 80% motor limit. That'll take you down to about 1900 kV. And the thing is, the lower the motor limit, the more sort of trouble you're likely to get yourself into. But by limiting yourself to 80%, that's still a perfectly reasonable kV. And I think it'll be fine. Machine Head asks, what temperature roundabout is the performance loss threshold with the motors? That's a good point, and I don't know the answer. I'll bet you that Chris Rosser could tell you, show you a chart with a curve that shows the sort of magnet strength versus temperature, and we could look for the inflection point. That's interesting, but I don't know where that is. That's a very good question, Machine Head. <laughs> 